How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the Black Metal Rebellion. I'm your host, Jesse Morgan, a.k.a. Slamarella, and we're back with another horror movies to watch or avoid episode where I show you a few horror movies that I've gotten recently and let you know whether you should watch them or avoid them. So we've got a trilogy right now. I know there's four in the series, but I only have the trilogy at the moment. Starting off with the first one, we have Hatchet, the unrated director's cut. Pretty sure this is Kane Hodder as a, a, a basically a Jason without the mask type character going around slaughtering a bunch of people in the middle of like a Louisiana swamp type deal. I don't think it's actually Louisiana. It might be. I'm not sure. But it says New Orleans. Is Louisiana and New Orleans near each other? I'm Canadian. I don't know. Let me know in the comments section how terribly wrong or right I am. So yeah, pretty cool. Uh, it's got the guy that plays JP from Grandma's Boy in it. I always enjoy whatever he's in. It also has Tony Todd in this as well. Obviously not as Candyman, just kind of like as a voodoo guy. Definitely recommend checking this film out. It's really good, especially if you're just kind of into that like slasher guts and gore over the top murder, murders and kills type of stuff. This is the double disc edition, so I'll show you the back of this too. Old school American horror. So yeah, you got a, a bloody axe and a clean, well, <laughs> I say clean, but it's still got like dried blood on it. Axe for artwork. And of course this features the Victor Crowley killer in this. Kind of goes over the origins of how the the dad gets locked out while the son burns to death and then, you know, the son comes back for revenge because I think the dad ends up taking his life or, or his own life or something because he's very sad about the son dying or whatever. Either way, it's a, it's a fairly predictable origin and ghostly revenge and he's supernaturally endowed with crazy regenerative powers and strength. And, and stuff like that. Honestly, a really, really good film. And of course, it has the theatrical cut that's in this, but obviously you'd want the unrated director's cut with all the extra gory goodies and stuff. So yeah, uh, this is definitely a watch. I give it a, a probably a 7.5 or an eight out of 10. Pretty good like splatter film. Moving on to Hatchet 2. And in this one, they really want you to know that it's Adam Green's Hatchet 2 because I, it, there's another hatchet series out there, maybe. I doubt it, but I mean, it's horror, maybe. Anyways, this one says Victor Crowley lives. Again, another unrated director's cut. And like I said, he has regenerative powers. So whatever happened to him in the first one doesn't really matter. But the, the main girl that survives at the first one, she ends up becoming a different actress. And that actress is Daniel Harris that plays the main girl in this one. This is also really good. I like the fact that Daniel Harris is the, is the main actress for this one. Tony Todd's back in this as the voodoo doctor guy. I'm pretty sure <laughs> JP's back for a, a couple of seconds again and gets a hatchet in the face or something. And he, he briefly survives the first one just to die again. And this is pretty funny. I like that. It's not really a, a huge plot revealing detail. So don't come at me in the comments for, for telling you about it. But yeah, pretty much the same as the first one, just more more people to hack through and slash through, and Daniel Harris is in it. Also really good, also probably a 7 or 0.5 to an 8 out of 10. Watch, not avoid. And the last one that I have is again a director's cut. This is Hatchet 3, a nice cardboard slip cover. I like getting them with the slip covers. Unfortunately, the second one didn't have it. I'm sure there is of one available that has it, but I just didn't get that one. This one comes with a bunch of special features and stuff. Three featurettes, Hatchet 3 Behind the Scenes, Raising Cane, Swamp Fun. And of course, Kane Hodder's back as Victor Crowley. Daniel Harris is back in this one as well. I'm not sure if this is the one with the SWAT team or, or, or what, but yeah, or yes, it is the one with the SWAT team, obviously. Here we go right there. That's not gonna focus. There we go. But yeah, the SWAT team tries to come in and stop these guys, and it, it still doesn't go well for them. Just more fodder for Victor Crowley to tear through and disembowel. 
yeah basically another splatter fest it, it mostly lives up to the first two as well as well so again another eight out of ten honestly the whole hatchet series is probably like that there's also a fourth film called victor crowley something something here's a here's a picture of it here so you know what to look for but i don't have that one yet also probably really really good need to pick up a copy all right moving on to something kind of slightly obscure sort of not old old but something not a lot of people have from 2003 this is high tension i keep getting this one confused with a different movie that one's a zombie movie the one that i keep on getting it confused with but high tension this one is a kind of foreign film i believe it's supposed to be french and you can watch it with subtitles yeah it's subtitles it has the option for spanish or english subtitles it has the unrated u.s version and oh there's an english dubbed version but i feel like you get some weird language differentials in what they're actually saying you should probably just watch it with english subtitles in my opinion but it is, it, there is an English dubbed version if you really want it on this. Anywho, let's check out the disc on the inside. There it is there. And there's the, the chapters listing. So without giving away the twist in this, because there is a twist. And once you see it, you, you can never watch the movie the same way again. Because you wonder how certain things are done. And yeah. So basically this young lesbian couple are are going to visit their family or one, one of them's family in kind of the middle of nowhere and there is this kind of murderous truck driver type of guy following them sort of like joyride it's kind of like a rusty nail type of serial killer guy that's that's tracking them down and killing people for for whatever reason it's 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 part of the twist i can't really talk about it but there's there's some gory scenes in here some really fucked up twisted shit as it says it's high tension very intense stuff going on in here and you're constantly wondering like why the serial killer is after them who's gonna survive there's some um, almost supernatural qualities about the serial killer and some of the characters that are being offed act a, a very strange way towards the main girl in this while everything's happening and you're wondering why that's happening as well so yeah a, a very tongue-in-cheek twisty type of slasher stocky psychological horror film that it's hard to really talk about without spoiling I really, really recommend it. It's like a 9 out of 10 film for me. But once you know the twist, it's interesting to go back and kind of point out different things that doesn't really quite make sense after you find it out. So yeah, hopefully I've, I've tickled your fancy enough to get you to watch this and go check it out. Maybe you'll find it at your local used disc store or something for a, a decent price. I think we had to pay $12.99 for this one. Worth it. Definitely check that out. High Tension from 2003. Next is one that I've been trying to hunt down for a while. I saw it once on a burnt copy that one of our friends made up for us. I don't know if it was Ashley Kilpatrick or who, but someone lent me a burnt copy. And it was interesting. It's, it's not amazing, but if you're into like real life serial killers, then you might want to check out 8213 the gacy house 8213 i believe is the number of john wayne gacy's home when he was alive and after he was executed this group of paranormal investigators went to his home or at least the home that was rebuilt in the plot where his home was because i feel like they tore down the original house and then made a new one obviously got rid of the bodies and cleaned up everything because you know what happened with gacy but yeah so this group of paranormal investigators go to the gacy house it's not really his house anymore after they rebuilt it but anyway it's the place where he john wayne gacy lived and they try to contact the spirit of John Wayne Gacy to ask him some questions and, and find out some more about his, his crimes and his, his, his thought process and stuff. So it kind of starts out as a mostly serious type of paranormal investigation, I believe, found footage style of film. But then there are kind of some black humor and some 
some parody type of things that happen. Some of the characters are a little extra and you're like, all right, this isn't obviously 100% serious and realistic. You'll, you'll see it and understand when you see this. But at the beginning, it kind of puts itself as a serious paranormal investigation film about the ghost of John Wayne Gacy surrounding his house because spirits are tied to their homes, I guess, that way, if you believe in that stuff. And yeah, it's, it's not B-movie or super indie level quality, but it's also not like really good quality horror film. So don't expect the most amazing acting, obviously. And there's a scene with implied sodomy. So if that's kind of triggering to you or you're going to like really freak out about that, then maybe this isn't for you. But if you know who John Wayne Gacy is and you know what he did, this shouldn't be too much of a surprise when it hits that scene. So yeah, I think it's an all right film for for something that's bordering on somewhat parody. I'm glad I have in the collection. I, I like real life serial killer documentaries and horror films and stuff based on it. It's, it's intriguing. It's very interesting to see how they delve into the psyche and how their crimes and stuff are interpreted for live action purposes. This is sort of teetering on paranormal and real life serial killer stuff and found footage. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, 8213 The Gacy House should be probably up your alley. I'm not sure how hard this is to find. I found this at my local Deja Vu Discs, I believe for $12.99, maybe. Actually, no, I think it was pretty cheap and that's why we got it. I think it was actually $7 or $8.99, maybe even $6.99. I don't know. Either way, glad I got a copy of this in my collection now that I can watch if I want to. I'm feeling that paranormal found footage type of deal like Grave Encounters or, or, or things like that. Yeah. Um, 7.5 out of 10. I enjoyed it. Actually, no, let's be honest. Let's let's maybe say 6.5 out of 10 because despite my nostalgia for seeing it forever ago and liking real life serial killer films, it's honestly the, the acting will probably bring it down a few notches for you, but I still recommend seeing it. It's not something that you just, you know, throw in the garbage or just refuse to see. So yeah, if you ever see a copy of it out there, maybe consider checking it out. This one is probably the worst in the series. <laughs> Only get this if you are a huge, huge Pumpkinhead fan, but it was the hole in my collection that needed to be filled. That sounds suggestive. Anyways, this is Pumpkinhead Ashes to Ashes. Awful. <laughs> this is kind of bad. It it has this really horrible CGI pumpkin head. I'd say 50% of the time it's on screen, especially when it's climbing up and down the size of houses and on rooftops and stuff like that it's it's obviously cgi there's only a couple shots where i feel like it's the dude in the suit but again i like pumpkin head i like the idea of a, a demonic vengeance spirit taking the form of like this huge mutated child thing the acting in this is terrible it's got lance henriksen in it again because he obviously needed a paycheck <laughs> It's got Doug Bradley in this as some sort of weird physician. And then it's got some really bad female and, and male actors in between. And it's got the old hag that is constantly bringing Pumpkinhead back to life at the bequest of whoever gets faulted in these films. So it's literally the same plot over and over and over again. Blood Wings is probably better than this. But if you need all of them, you're going to have to collect Ashes to Ashes. But it, it is honestly like a, a 3 or a 4 out of 10. Do not expect great things out of this. Even Lance Henriksen and Doug Bradley can't save this, unfortunately. Only get this if you need to fill that pumpkin head hole. <laughs> yeah, can't recommend this one. Moving along to something I definitely can recommend, though. Especially if you're into that early teenage chasey type of slasher film like Scream, I Know What You Did Last Summer, The Curve, also known as Dead Man's Curve, or Soul Survivors. I'll have a thing here. You definitely need to get The Curve and Soul Survivors. It's on my list of things to get. But anyways, what I'm talking about is Cherry Falls with Brittany Murphy and the dude from Terminator, Michael Bean. Yeah, he's in this as the dad. He's got some secrets in his closet that's for sure this one is interesting this film as the tagline suggests 
lose your innocence or lose your life. Instead of the virgin is saved and, and free from any scorn from the bad guys in, in the typical teen horror films, this one, if you stay a virgin, you are a target. So basically, it's a suggested fuck fest. <laughs> <laughs> as one of the, I guess, teachers say in this. But yeah, so for unknown reasons until the end, the killer is going around and, and murdering virgins and whatnot. And Brittany Murphy and her friends have to try and stay alive and figure out the secret. I believe that's a picture of Brittany Murphy and her boyfriend. In this or the guy that keeps on trying to be your boyfriend and this is a scream or shout factory blu-ray i believe this was re-released fairly recently but it's originally from the year 2000 we got this off of amazon so if you're looking for a copy i'm pretty sure amazon still has a few copies can't find the dvd and if you do it's going to be mucho dinero so you might want to go for the shout factory blu-ray <sighs> honestly the quality is probably not really worth it to get a blu-ray but the money definitely will be because i ain't paying 50 or 60 dollars for a regular dvd of this a a, a 25 dollar blu-ray is just fine i'd rather not pay 25 dollars either but honestly this is a really good film especially again if you like the scream or the i know you did last summer type of films or urban legend or or soul survivors etc highly recommend this one 7.5 out of 10 or 8 out of 10 as well twist is is interesting I, I can't comment about it or my political feelings about the character and the twist because it'll spoil it but i'm not impressed with how they kind of handle that type of character maybe for another time yeah it, check it out get a copy if you can next up is the last voyage of the demeter a dracula story not really into vampires ever since twilight came out it just made vampires a joke they used to be creepy they used to be cool they used to be goth and scary and all that but unfortunately twilight ruined that for me and i could never take vampires seriously but this this is a cool creature gothic version of vampires that i can dig I know a lot of people, when they saw this, were saying it was boring and, and the times the Dracula was on the screen wasn't enough and blah, 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 blah. It's a slow burn and it does take a while for crazier stuff to happen, but that's most horror movies. Most horror movies, for the first 80% of it, is character building, plot, blah, 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 mostly boring stuff. And then the last 20 minutes, it's carnage, blood, screaming, bones breaking, shit going down. Not really any different with this film. So if you're a horror fan, this shouldn't be any different or weird to you. And you should be used to that boring uphill slog of a watch that every horror movie is usually you know plagued with so that is not anything different for this the creature effects in this are excellent the story with the captain and his son or daughter or whatever is actually fairly heartwarming and and sad that certain things happened so yeah it comes with a couple of bonus features too evil is aboard the making of the last voyage of the demeter from the pits of hell dracula reimagined pretty sick i i love the creature design of dracula in this it is a very interesting take on what happened in the in-between spot that happened in Bram Stoker's Dracula, where you know he goes from England to America. But what happens on that journey? Well, this is what happens on that journey. And it even kind of hints at a sequel. I hope that happens. Really, really cool. Definitely check it out. Don't listen to people when they say it's boring. All horror movies are boring for the first hour. <laughs> okay, so no different here. And then when shit pops off, it pops off. So yeah, last voyage of the Demeter. Eight out of 10, really good. Next one, ooh, uh, don't pick it up. I wouldn't get this one. The only reason I got this one was because Ice Cube is in it and Jason Statham is in it. I've kind of been on a Jason Statham kick. Don't know why, I just, just am. Same with Ice Cube. I've kind of had a, a affinity for him lately as well. I don't know if it's his charming personality or his good looks or his his raps, but something about him is hitting the spot for me acting wise and music wise. 
and Jason Statham's new Beekeeper movie, which I really need to see. Kind of inspired me to watch some of his stuff. I saw Ace's Wild or something like that, where he's kind of like a gambling addict. It's an okay film. He kicks a lot of ass without using guns, so that's cool. Anyways, I wish I could say awesome positive things about this film, <laughs> but I can't. It's it's not good. The creatures in this are neat, I guess. The possessed people in this are interesting. There's like weird demon Mars ghosts that are possessing people and getting them to do really violent stuff against the people who are living on Mars. Have we just not learned to, to not send people to Mars yet? Like Total Recall and Ghosts of Mars are, are, are two huge reasons to stop going there, I think. Don't get me wrong, I like the idea of a crazy killer shit being on different planets and us being dumb humans going and investigating for science, getting them fucked up. Fine with me, uh, but let's, let's do a little bit better than the really bad acting and kind of slog that this was and kind of didn't age the greatest too. Like Jason Statham, constantly hitting on the girl from species in this really annoying yeah natasha henstridge that must have been a pain in the ass to deal with like you're you, you're naked for a tiny bit in one fucking movie and and every every dude is just slobbering all over you that that has got to be really annoying i'm sure it was a compliment for the first 10 minutes <laughs> After that film was made, then then after that, I'm sure Natasha just wanted every cis man to die because uh, just just how annoying I'm sure that would be. Your 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 message is going to be on red forever, okay? So stop messaging Natasha Hestridge. <laughs> Anyways, did I show the inside of this? I don't know. Here's the inside again because I can't remember. This is uh, this is like a four out of ten movie only get it if you have to pick up everything by Ice Cube or Jason Statham, I guess, or, or Natasha Hedstridge, of course. But otherwise, you could probably skip Ghosts of Mars. Mm. Mm -mm. Nope. I don't even care if it's a special edition. Don't, don't even pick it up. <laughs> Avoid. And the last one on here. Oh, Oh, this was such a treat. I am so glad we finally got a copy of this and was able to see it because Canada doesn't get streaming for half of the shit that comes out. And it's annoying because I haven't been able to see Founders Day yet, haven't been able to see this, and I probably won't be able to get to see The Frogman. I probably won't be able to get to see The Frogman until it comes out on DVD. I would love to see that. Apparently Frogman fucks. Ew, gotta see that. So anyways, Eli Roth is back, one of the masters of horror, he does the grossest shit, and he looks like an evil Ryan Reynolds, so that's kind of cool. But yeah, Thanksgiving, awesome random holiday horror film. There is shit that happens in this that, dear lord, you would wish would never happen to you. It's fucked. Definitely see this. If you saw Scream 7 and you saw the twist of who the bad guy was in that, may or may not be the same twist in this. So that's all I'm going to say without spoiling anything. You need to see this if you're a horror fan. Thanksgiving is amazing. And apparently we're, we're getting a, a second course. We're getting Thanksgiving too. So awesome. Can't wait. I don't know who they're going to have as the bad guy. I mean, they didn't really show their body at the end. So I guess they could still be alive. But come on. <laughs> How do you survive that? I mean, I guess it's not your body being thrown in, into a giant meat grinder like a certain other film had that definitely made it end. But still. Anyways, really good. 9.5 out of 10. Fantastic holiday gimmick film that is definitely more than just a holiday gimmick slasher. Check out Thanksgiving. Fantastic film. All right. That is it. That is our latest stack of horror films to watch or avoid. Go away, glare. Stop rooting my ending. Thank you so much for watching. We will more than likely be doing a collection update next of some some metal, some some thrash, some blackened shit for once. And yeah, 
See you in the next video. Cheers. For glory, for the rebellion, Slammerella out.